Oh man, I look like a toddler. Okay, so this is the seventh gen X1 Carbon. And even though it's, you know, more or less focused at business people, personally, I think it's the perfect EDC laptop. And I'm gonna tell you why, but first, a big thank you to my new sponsor, scdkey.com, which is where I actually get all my games and software keys from at heavy discounts. So keep watching till the end for a Windows 10 discount code I managed to snag for everyone. So first off, thanks to its carbon fiber chassis, it's crazy lightweight at just under two and a half pounds, which means you'll hardly notice it in your bag. Then thanks to its thin 14.9 millimeter design, it'll fit like damn near anywhere. And because it's got this minimalist design aesthetic with a matte black paint job, you know, people might actually think you're smarter and more sophisticated than you actually are. At least that's the effect I hoped it would have for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, the matte black is that soft touch coating we're all familiar with, which means after cleaning it within five minutes, it'll look like you just finished shoving your hands in a McDonald's french fry basket and then tried giving the carbon a massage after. And on top of all that, it's tested and designed alongside the US DOD's military standard 810G spec, which means it can take a bullet, uh, you can throw it at brick walls and go swimming with it in the ocean. Absolutely none of that is true. Don't do any of that. It will break, but it is mil spec. So that should give you some peace of mind when it comes to durability. So popping off the bottom panels really easy with just five screws and a Quaalude. But once you're in there, not a whole lot you can do. You can clean the fan, swap the battery and SSD and the WAN card if you got the model that comes with one and but that's, that's about it. The RAM soldered onto the motherboard, and as far as I'm aware, there's no expansion slot. Same thing with the wireless card, but honestly, who cares? It's the Intel 9560, and it's, it's an awesome wireless card. There's a decent spread of ports with two USB-A ports, HDMI, audio combo port, a docking station or network port, if you get the dongle, yeah. I know. And then two Thunderbolt 3 ports. There's five different 14 inch display options you can pick from. My review units have fitted with a low power 400 nits 1080p IPS panel. It's a bit sweet and sour cause it's got nice color gamuts and great max brightness on a 60 hertz panel, but that response time is slow. Like Mr. Magoo slow. <laughs> so you'll see a fair amount of ghosting if you're scrolling too fast or like whipping around the mouse cursor, but looking into reviews and the models with the QHD and UHD resolution displays, they don't seem to have that issue. So if you're more sensitive to stuff like that, it might be worth the upgrade and display. And then at the top of the display, there's your standard garbage quality 720p webcam, but they've tossed in one of those sweet sliding covers. So shady folks who don't like to mind their own business can't perb out on you without paying first. Love that feature. Uh, the keyboard is baller. Uh, we've still got the familiar U-shaped keys that Lenovo's known for with great spacing between them and an awesome 1.5 millimeter travel distance, which is shallower than last year's 1.8, but it still feels absolutely fantastic to type on. Love, love, love this keyboard. So the red Russian nips still there, otherwise known as the track point. For me, it's just fun to play with because I still can't seem to get used to it. Could be because it's using an ELAN driver, which would explain its finickiness, or, you know, could be because I just suck at it, but I don't like admitting defeat, so I'm gonna go ahead and blame the driver here. The dedicated left and right mouse buttons are a bit loose, but still feel solid when pressed, and the click style trackpad's been awesome. I mean, it's a bit small, but it's got awesome finger glide, and it's running a Windows driver, so it's finicky free, what? And then to the right of that is a fingerprint reader for some added security for both business folks and regular Joes like you and me to help keep out corporate espionage spies or your jackass friends who like changing your wallpaper to SpongeBob SquarePants or Dora the Explorer. Yeah, true story. Now, keeping in mind the carbon's a thin and light, the audio quality is pretty decent. There's two speakers on the deck that act as the tweeters and a couple more on the bottom for the low end. Uh, I wouldn't say it gives off any actual bass, but the lows are definitely present here. Personally, I'd describe the audio quality as crisp and clear. And yeah, it gets loud enough to fill a room at up to 87 decibels. So I think Lenovo did a pretty good job considering. Okay, so performance. Now, I wouldn't say it's great, I'd say it's good. I mean, it's a very thin laptop with a single exhaust fan. So heat management isn't fantastic. Get it? It isn't fantastic? No? Okay. Stress testing with A to 64 makes it thermal throttle right out the gate, causing the boost clock speeds to take a hit. But here's the thing. 
it actually fluctuates up and down quite a bit. So while it kind of starts out at about three gigahertz, it'll slowly climb up to 3.8 for about five minutes, then drop back down to between three and 3.2 gigahertz, but averages out at around 3.5, which is pretty gosh dang decent. And that's with a hot but average temperature of 89 degrees Celsius. But to be clear, I highly, highly doubt anyone's gonna be running a workload equivalent to the stress test with what this laptop's designed for. But then again, I don't know what you guys do in your spare time, so. Fan noise is scary quiet even under load. I took a reading while running the stress test and it maxed out at about 39 dB. That's at max fan speeds. While idle, it's like completely silent. Like a slow, warm summer breeze is louder than this thing. It's awesome. And finally, battery life. I mean, there's no other word to describe it than insane. Uh, it's got a 51 watt hour battery that supports fast charging. I think from like zero to 100% took about an hour with its micro size 65 watt power brick. And at 91 nits or 50% screen brightness under everyday productivity workloads, I squeaked out just over a solid 14 hours. So I'd imagine at 75% brightness, it'd probably get you around 12 hours. Anyways, that's awesome. Like last you all day awesome. Games and software licenses are expensive, but they don't have to be. SCDKey.com is an online game key and software license shop that I've legit been using as my main go-to for at least the past couple years. I've used them to buy every single game I own, Windows 10 licenses for friends, and even my own personal gaming PC. So let's say you just built a new gaming rig or maybe something a little more reasonable for dear old grandma. Just search for Windows 10, boom, Windows 10 OEM Global for under 13 bucks. Hit the buy now button and enter my promo code JB20 for an instant 20% discount. Click submit order and simply pick your payment method poison. Job done. Grandma's gonna be stoked. So stop spending more money than you have to and hit up the link in the description to get the goodies. SCDKey.com, the S is for savings. I, I think. So there you have it. The seventh gen X1 Carbon, the perfect EDC laptop. Don't agree? Fight me in the comments. I can't go on camera with a black guy and a broken nose. No. But that does it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, show me some love with that like button. Subscribe if you're new to my stuff. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next and some behind the scenes goodness. But thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.